In this video, I'm going to show how to add a mirror VDEV to an existing ZFS data pool in TrueNAS. Currently, I have a data pool that has two mirror VDEVs with six terabyte drives in them each. So I actually have a total of 12 terabytes of storage between four drives. I prefer to use mirrors because it has a number of advantages. I only have to use two drives at a time to upgrade. Um, so I don't have to buy three, four, or five, six drives uh, at a time. To me, it's the, more, the budget friendly way to add storage to a TrueNAS data pool. Let's go ahead and put these. I'm gonna put these in my, I have a hot swap bay. I wanna put them you know, in the trays and then we'll switch over to the computer um, and configure TrueNAS to accept these new drives. So I'm excited to uh, expand my capacity. Now I'm in my server closet. I'm gonna open up my chassis and pull out my trays here. I have two uh, hot swap bays that I have right here. So just uh, we'll screw the hard drives in and then I'll uh, plug them in. So now I got my hard drive screwed into my trays. There's, there's some screws on the back there you can see. Uh, all I need to do now is actually just uh, plug these drives in. Like so. And make sure I have it facing the right way. All right. Yeah, and that's all you need to do uh, if you have hot swap bays. And of course, if, you have, if everything supports hot swapping, uh, it should be picked up by your system and you don't have to reboot. Here we are at the dashboard of TrueNAS. As you can see, I'm sitting at 87% used with a little over one terabyte of disk space free. Um, you can see I have four disks in use and I have two VDEVs because they're, they're mirror VDEVs. So um, there's two disks in each uh, mirror VDEV. So all we need to do now is just click on storage. And as you can see, we have two unassigned disks. Those are the disks I just plugged in. I didn't reboot the system, didn't need to because they're hot swappable. So that, that is really awesome. I love that feature. So all you need to do is click add to pool and you'll see that I have two 12 terabyte disks. Of course, there's only 10.91 usable terabytes on each disk. Um, so instead of creating a new pool, we're going to add it to an existing pool and I creatively named my data pool data pool. So the, that's what I'm going to choose and I'm going to click add disks. All we need to do now is click on this checkbox in the upper left hand corner of this available disk table and to select them. And then we'll click this arrow and then move it over to the data V devs that we're adding. So you'll see, we have these two disks that we're going to add. And it's, it, it, what's nice is down here at the bottom, it tells you the total amount of capacity in the data pool that we'll have now that we added those disks. As you can see, we got 10.91 plus the 1.41 that we had uh, from the dashboard that you saw that equals 12.33 uh, terabytes. I'm basically doubling my capacity, like I mentioned earlier. And we just wanna click add uh, data VDEVs. Okay, and it's gonna give you a warning that this is gonna be erased, but I actually didn't format the disk anyway because they're brand new. So who cares, right? But they need to be formatted. So we'll just click on confirm and then click add VDEVs. And now you'll see that the um, pool is being updated to add the extra drives. Oh, wow. <laughs> so there we go. See, now my usable capacity is only at, a used capacity, I should say, is only at 43%. And now I have 12 terabytes available um, and 21 total usable terabytes at, you know, out of 24. So, um, it's going to give us this little warning message that we have mixed VDEV capacities because ideally you want to have the capacities the same so that the data writes uh, evenly across all of the drives because whenever you have larger capacity drives in there, I believe it uses those drives a little bit more because it tries to even out the amount of data that's used across the drives. And so the newer drives might end up getting used more, which I'm okay with if that's the case, because in theory they should last longer in my older drives. So if they, if it ends up taking more of the rights and the, and stuff, it might affect performance a little bit. <clears throat> I'm not necessarily after the maximum conform performance. I'm just after solid, uh, reliable data storage. Um, since these are spinning disks, I'm not expecting a ton of, uh, you know, extra performance out of these things. So eventually I'd love to have a, a solid state, this all solid state storage, um, which would be awesome. But for now, uh, for large capacities, the spinning disks are the way to go as far as price and budget right now. So that's all there is to it um, to add that. So I hope you found this useful and uh, you know, it's pretty simple and straightforward. If anything else, it demonstrates how quick and easy it is to add to an existing data pool.